what's up what's up what's up what's happening everybody good evening it's the pastor let me get a little music started right quick a little sound from like 1970 1971 by the incomparable Curtis Mayfield. At this time, he was formerly of the Impressions. His um, solo, first solo venture. The song is called Move On Up. Let me get some folks tagged up right quick. I hope everybody's had a wonderful day. Move on up toward your destination. Mm -mm. Come on, folks. Come on in the room. Again, I hope everybody's had a wonderful day today. Again, thank you for all who reached out today to ask me how the eye was doing. Not as bad as it was yesterday, for sure. Still got some pain, some swelling. Move on up. Man, I love looking at all of the wonderful people that are on my timeline. Just the, the great hearts that's, that's part of this group right here. Remember, your dream is your only scheme, so keep on pushing. That's what I'm talking about. It's the real deal. Take nothing less hmm. than the suffering best. Do not obey. You must be for safe, but you can pass the test. Got a few more folks I'm going to try to tag up right quick. I hope uh, you all will share this out. Try to get some folks on board tonight. This is the um, election edition. The day after the 2020 general election. A day when we've really had returns on the majority of our races out here, political races, still waiting on final confirmation on the presidential race, I do believe. And I'm going to believe that uh, that decision has long been made and it's been made in favor of the people of the United States who have good hearts, right hearts, whose minds aren't tainted by, tainted by racism and violence and all of the un other tendencies that keep us from getting, getting along, from being the great people that we can be. Come on, Curtis. Curtis got the break about right here. All right, boom. Come on now. Get a drummer some like James Brown used to say. Somebody get a drummer some. <laughs> what up, what up, what up? Good evening. I know I tagged a few folks that were in races last night and 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 in various um, um, races for various seats last night. So I hope to get on tonight. Uh, Claire, good evening. And Sean, good evening. Caroline, how you doing? And Tracy, good evening. Deborah, come on now. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Jesse Williams in the house, what's going on? Yeah, Valerie, good evening. Yes, 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 Kelly, and I had to come back tonight after last night. 
you know, I'm, I know in my heart and in my spirit, there's folks out here that's burdened by the events that's going on in the world right now. But listen, we gonna get past that. We gonna move on up to a brighter future, a better destination. Every last one of us, for sure. And those who right now appear to be in some way winning over the last few years or whatever, they are a minority that are being phased out and ultimately will be phased out. Bridges will be built, hearts will be mended, lives will be repaired, justice will rule, truth and equity will be the order of the day, and all of our, our, our nation will come together, will come together. Trust me, trust me. Mm. Erica, school board member. Yes, Charleston County School Board member Erica Coakley in the house. Miss B, what's going on? Scott, how you doing? Yeah, doing a lot better, Scott, for sure. Uh, let me take the glasses off. Y'all can see I still got a little bit of a, a mouse under my eye. Look like somebody done hit me in my eye. You know, I, I don't want y'all to misunderstand that somebody go after the races down this thing thing and they done jumped on me or something like that. Nah, it's a sty. It's a sty for sure. Deli, good evening. Jamie, all right, all right. Donna, good evening. Yes, yes. D Shanti in the house. D, I love you. I love you. Lavinia, what's going on? All right, all right. A1 from day one. Been down with the old school, new school coalition and still rocking it out. For sure. Cherry? Yes, yes. Brother Ron, what's going on? Zach Vapa in the house. My man. My man. Dan, what's going on? Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you. Got a word in here tonight. Got a word. Uh, did they already call it for Biden? Um, I, I certainly hope so. I've had some... I've had some challenges today with my, my television reception and internet. It's been just... Man, I, I got to believe in moving on up. I got to believe that pressing forward, there's a better day. Because the obstacles that not only me, but every one of us face every day. We can't quit. We can't be discouraged. So I don't have like updates on what's going on with the presidential one. So, you know, it is what it is. Ain't going to steal my joy. Uh, that's, that's in here. Can't nobody take that from you. No matter what happens. Kristen French, yes, yes, Charleston County School Board member, elect Kristen French in the house. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. J.D. Davis, good to see you. Colleton County um, School Board uh, candidate, for sure. Good to see you. Chris, what's going on? All right, from the upstate, chiming on in. Good to see you. All right, all right, all right. I actually tagged tag some people. Yes, all the way. Greenville represented. I appreciate you. That's for sure. You know, I actually tagged Kim Nelson from up that way. Also, Hosea Cleveland, uh, trying to get them on tonight. You know, uh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, because I'm, I'm basically only talking about the races from yesterday, uh, statewide and locally. I can't talk about all of them, just too many races. But definitely going to talk about the... Um, the congressional races and then bring it on down to the local uh, South Carolina legislative races, um, uh, General Assembly races, and then on down to the further to the local races. OK, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Curtis Mayfield, folks, from 1970, 1971. Move on up. And the music, the music, the words are great. And I'm going to read the words as I'm closing tonight. But the music, man, that's, they got that bongo and carrying on. Yes, yes, yes. Make you get up and, and, and just be motivated, you know, be motivated. You know, I like some, I like some hip hop now. Y'all don't get me wrong now. I like me some hip hop now. But every now and then you got to reach back and, and grab a little musical tidbit. That's going to get you energized and motivated so you don't get bogged down by the, the cares of today and the worries of today. Because we need to get beyond those things. You know, how many of y'all know that the longer we stay bogged down by something today, the longer it's going to take us to get to the successes of tomorrow? Somebody need to write that one down. 
The longer we stay bogged down in the problems of today, the longer it's going to take us to see and to achieve the successes of tomorrow. So we can't let ourselves be sidetracked by the troubles of today. We address them, yes, but don't fixate on them. Don't just stay right there. I got some friends that I have to talk to about that because they get fixated on one issue, one problem, and they blow that problem up like it's the biggest problem in the world and they never move beyond that. And being stuck on that one, one problem prevents them from actually being to, able to grow and to mature in other areas because it's always about this. It's always about that problem, that same problem. You ever talk to somebody and no matter what they're talking about, they always come back to the same subject? That's somebody that will never be able to get beyond that subject. So I'm saying that because of the fact that no matter which way elections go, there are those who, by hopefully always by popular vote, that they will be elected to office. Some would call them winners. And then there are those who, for whatever reason, might not have the enough votes, enough votes in order to uh, have the victory. I can't call those folks losers because in my book, those folks that run but just aren't the ones elected, they, they are not losers, that's for sure. And it's not because I've been in that, that position, but it's because I understand what they went through just by stepping up to represent the voice of the people. It ain't, it ain't no easy job running for office. It ain't no easy job. It's physically taxing. It's mentally taxing. It's emotionally taxing. It's financially draining. It's an impact, an, an adverse impact on family life. Everything gets turned upside down for people when they run for office with the hope that in the end there would be victory, but with the knowledge in the back of the mind that it might not be a victory. Nevertheless, nevertheless, they persist and they persisted. And we saw in yesterday's 2020 elections, those who persisted, some who persisted and were victorious because of the vote, not just because of the effort they put in, but because their platform resonated, others because of other circumstances that I'm not going to get into, but still in all, there were those who won the election and then there were winners who didn't win the election. And I'm so proud, so proud of all who put their hats in the ring. And I just wanted to stop tonight. As somebody would say, some preachers would say, I just stopped by here tonight on the way to heaven to let you each and every one of you know how much I appreciate you, to congratulate you on your run for office, for those who were victorious in this, in their runs, I'm going to talk to you tonight and for all of the winners who I know personally, I'm going to talk to you tonight. So I'm going to get, man, I, I, I almost had, I had to uh, pass the flashback then because I was getting ready to say, okay, let's pray in <laughs> the opening prayer. I, I, I definitely had one of them flashback moments right there for sure. Move on up. <laughs> Move on up. So let's start at the top and work down. And let's start with those who were victorious last night. And let's, I'm going to move quickly through them. Okay. Uh, that way I can get on to the, 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 the winners. The winners. Because the ones who were victorious last night, they're going to continue to get the pats on the back. Trust me, I know this. I'm telling you from firsthand experience. While those who were not victorious, the ones who I'm calling the winners, their pats on the back are going to begin to fade after a few days. And over time, they won't be um, as acknowledged 
as acknowledged as when they were running or the day of the election. But I want to make sure, though, that that recognition comes right now. And I want them to hear directly from me, Pastor Dixon, man, because I love you. I love every, every last one of you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do that, about that. Nothing you can do about it. Okay, so let's start not at the presidential level, but let's start at the next step below the presidential space with the winners, okay? Those who were victorious last night. Starting with the Honorable House, United States House of Representatives, that's Congress, okay? Remember, there are two houses in Congress, the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives. And in the 6th Congressional District, South Carolina has seven congressional districts. It's broken up into seven sections, and each district has one representative, while the entire state has two senators, okay? So in the victory column last night for our um, United States House of Representatives, we have one person who has consistently been victorious now for... Well, since the 90s, okay, since the 90s. And that's House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn, James Clyburn, in the 6th Congressional District. Congratulations, Congressman. Please continue the work that you're doing. Uh, I know that as time is passing, and I know that it's got to be rough for you campaigning as you're getting older, I'm looking forward to that one that's being vetted to move in when you decide that it's time to step back or to scale back. Bakari, are you out there? <laughs> Bakari Sellers, you out there, man? <laughs> so, yeah, I just dropped that out there. But thank you, Congressman Clyburn, and congratulations on your win. Coming on down from the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, okay, that seven seats open in the United States House of Representatives and two Senate, so one Senate seat was open last night. And we had only one victory out of those seats, and that was Jim Clyburn. Uh, the same thing happened in 2016. Jim Clyburn was the only victorious person in South Carolina, um, Democrat in South Carolina. Um, so I'm going to move from Congress down to our South Carolina General Assembly. And I know there's a bunch of people that, um, that won last night um, as far as statewide for the South Carolina um, Senate. Um, and for the South Carolina House of Representatives, but I'm going to going to touch on a few of them, okay? In the uh, South Carolina Senate, uh, Senator Marlon Kempson retained his seat. You know, congratulations, Senator Kempson. Um, and uh, also, uh, Senator Margie Bright Matthews was victorious last night. Congratulations, Senator Matthews. Okay. And then let me move. Uh, and like I said, there are more, but I can't get into all of them or else we'll be here all night. And I don't intend to be here all night. I'm going to put some more drops in that eye bloop, 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 and uh, call it a night, uh, especially if my TV's back working, <laughs> you know, for sure. But that's the South Carolina Senate. OK, there are two houses in our South Carolina General Assembly, just like in Congress. There's the Senate which is the greater house, and then the House of Representatives, which is the lesser house. So in our House of Representatives last night, locally, we had victories from incumbent J.A. Moore, incumbent Wendell Gilliard, incumbent Marvin Pendarvis, and newly incumbent Spencer Wetmore. Remember, she had a special election in June where she was actually elected to the seat, she defeated a Republican and was re elected to the seat. Now, nobody, I'm not talking about any, let me just clarify this. I'm not talking about any Republicans that, tonight, okay? That's, that's kind of not what I do, okay? I just want to, for clarity's sake. So if you're looking for me to start naming Republicans, I might, I might hit one or two tonight, but I doubt it. I strongly doubt it. I'm talking about Democrats, okay? And right now I'm talking about those who either retained their seats or won their seats. Uh, Spencer Wetmore, she had the special election in June. Now she had to run again right here in this race to actually get elected for a full term. She won that seat. State Representative Crystal Matthews, congratulations. My representative, this House District number 117, and Representative Leon Stavernakis, longtime South Carolina House of Representatives representing District 119. Um, but we had two newcomers, new seats that were picked up, and both by young African Americans. 
Uh, Dion Tedder. Dion Tedder won yesterday, handily won his race um, for District 109. Um, moving into the seat that State Representative David Mack held for a long time and did an amazing job as the representative. And I do believe that uh, Representative-elect Dion Tedder is going to do just as an amazing job or even greater works than what Representative David Mack did. And also Shardell Murray, District 116, was victorious. They, these are new State House representatives in South Carolina representing the people. And that's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Young folk. Young folk. I guess everybody young to me, you know, I'm 68, so everybody young. For sure. You know, that's all right. Except for Donald Trump and um, Joe Biden. They're a little bit older than me. Okay, a little bit. A little bit. So those are the only ones I'm going to congratulate out on the House of Representatives specifically, but to all that have run in the South Carolina House of Representatives and the South Carolina Senate, all of those, the, the winners who, uh, well, Congressman Jim Clyburn again, congratulations to all of you. And it's most appreciated uh, for the work that you're do you, you've done. But we're going to move on from the South Carolina General Assembly down to the county level where one of the most significant races that was run and won by the Democratic candidate was for Charleston County Sheriff. Shout out to Kristen Graziano, now Charleston County Sheriff elect Kristen Graziano on her victory over a 32 year incumbent sheriff, ushering in a new day and a new way in the Charleston County Sheriff's office where Law and order dog whistles and following behind the um, the lead of of the the, the 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 liar in chief for the last four years it is now going to be relieved of that position. It is it's time, folks. It's time, and I'm not going to say that Al Cannon might have been the worst person out, but you know I'm for term limits. I strongly believe in term limits, and I believe that anybody that's been in, in office 32 years, and that goes in North Charleston for Dorothy Williams and Sam Hart and some of these others that's been in office seems like forever, they need to go out on and get out of the way because, you know, over time, first off, your community changes. Mores change. Uh, um, the way of thinking changes. And a lot of times people's minds get stuck in a, in a time warp. We see that with parents every day who don't understand their children. And because of that, they don't really respect their children, even though their children are, are, are growing older and, have, and, and are really logical thinking with good thoughts, uh, uh, children growing up. But parents don't understand that because parents' minds are stuck in, you know, like, you know, I'm, my mind might be stuck in it. Y'all keep hearing me playing 60s and 70s music. I could very well be equating everything around me according to what I went through in the 60s and 70s, not realizing or not accepting the fact that change has happened. So I strongly believe in term limits. And for anybody that's been in office for 30 years, I don't believe that their effectiveness to actually legislate or to delegate or to represent the people, I don't believe that that effectiveness is there. So it was time for Sheriff Al Cannon to move on. And uh, we're going to uh, make sure that um, there's an honorable transition in order for Sheriff-elect right now, Kristen Graziano, to take control of that office and to exercise the full authority that comes with that position. By the way, she is the first woman sheriff in South Carolina. Trailblazer. Congratulations, Kristen, from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations. And I look forward to working along with you in whatever capacity that, that needs to be done in order for the community not only to be represented, but to be treated with a fairness that has been somewhat lacking up under uh, um, the, the incumbent who lost that, that seat last night after 32 years. Congratulations, for sure, okay? Um, two other races that were really significant were for county council, Charleston County Council, 
where we had Rob Werman, Democrat Rob Werman, uh, District 3, and Kylon Middleton, the Reverend Dr. Kylon Middleton from District 6, both win seats in the Charleston County uh, Council, on the Charleston County Council. Now, we've got some innovative ideas. We've got f a fresh look on County Council, and there's something else, and I, I, I can't say negatively as far as County Council. I do know some things about like Elliot Summy and others who have been on that that's in, on that on that um, in that forum, the County Council forum. But I know, especially with the voice of Kylon Middleton, I he and I are, are close friends, and I know that the voice of of equity and truth is going to ring strong in County Council with him there, for sure. The voice of the people will be represented by Kylon Middleton and by Rob Werman because and I say Rob also because Rob made it a point to have a conversation with me a very good conversation a lengthy conversation too and what I took away from that was he was willing to ask questions and to talk about the issues and to listen about the issues and that's what it takes We've had enough people that get elected to office and once they get to elected, they think they know it all and they never come back to check with the people. Well, Rob said, yeah, I'll be back to check. And he followed up with that today. I'll be back to check. The conversations will happen. And that's what it's all about. That is what it's all about. Nichols, what's going on? Good to see you. Much love to you and Colleen. Okay. Um, let's see who else I got. Kareem Bay, what's going on? Brother Deidre. How you doing? All right, Nina. Good evening. Good evening. All right, let me back this up just a little bit. Carl, you know I like to acknowledge folks. Mike, better. Man, it's better with better. For sure. What's going on? William, good to see you also. Taylor, good to see you also. All righty. Anise Moultrie, good to see you also. All righty. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Marks, what's going on? All righty. Um, let's see. I think I got just about everybody. Annette. Yeah, Huey Hampton. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it. I, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to leave it right there. JD in the house for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Let me advance this forward. So that was Charleston County Council with Rob Werman and, and Kylon Middleton. Congratulations, my brothers, for sure. Um, of course, you know, you representing the voice of the people. And I do believe that the people are going to be strongly and correctly represented um, by you on county council and let's move from county council to charleston county consolidated school board which 16 candidates and five seats 16 candidates and five seats and the winners were there were two seats open in the north area okay with two incumbents running actually and neither one of the incumbents picked up the seat I'm not, I'm, again, we are not talking about losers because there are no losers. Everybody that ran in this race, I know, it, you were winners, you were winners. But the ones who were victorious were, in the north area, the two seats, Courtney Waters and Kristen French, okay? Courtney, I don't know that well. I've had a conversation with her. Um, and um, Kristen, I, I, I know quite well. Kristen has been out on the battlefield for a while championing causes, um, definitely somebody that when we've had rallies, marches, and things of that sort, or school board meetings, whatever, she's been there. That's for sure. That's for sure. So we had in those two, two North Area seats, we have Courtney Waters, Kristen French. West Ashley had two seats open. We have Erica Coakley, who won her seat, and Helen Frazier, Dr. Helen Frazier. And the West Ashley seats. I'm hoping I got these correct, okay, as far as Ellen Frazier, too. I think I did, okay. Um, and then in the peninsula, there was one seat open, and Lauren Herderick is the, it was the victor in the peninsula, in the peninsula seat. So now, for these five candidates, they're going to be joining the, uh, excuse me, five elect members of the Charleston County Consolidated School Board, they're going to be joining four other seated um, board members. Um, and I believe that will be also in January. I think it's January 5th or something like that. 
uh, is the is the swearing in the inauguration. I'm not exactly sure. Don't quote me on that. But um, they will be joining the other four board members um, in order to uh, um, run our take care of our school district uh, as the seated board. Now, these seats, all nine seats on this board will be up in two years, okay, because we're switching over from an at-large system in Charleston County School District to a single-member district representation. So all nine members of the Charleston County School Board will be up for re-election in two years, okay, not four years. This is not, this is not a four-year term. All of these are going to have to run again in two years. So y'all get ready. Get ready. The community is going to be watching. And as I close out this section shortly, <laughs> there's some much, something else that the community is going to be doing. OK, so congratulations to Courtney Waters. Congratulations to Kristen French. Congratulations to Dr. Helen Frazier. Congratulations to Lauren Herderick. And man, I am so proud and happy of my girl. Erica Coakley, <laughs> they done made that mama mad. <laughs> I am so happy. She has a heart for the community, unlike a heart that, that, that many have. I met Erica in the fight for 15, out on the streets trying to find ways in order to get people paid a decent wage. And this was many years ago. And she's been in this fight and she's a, 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 a single mother raising her children and just doing an ounce and working two and three jobs, you know, understanding the minimum wage thing, attending PTA meetings and, and, and part of the different um, meetings that the school board has had to see what direction they need to take. She's been right there. So although I can give a shout out and my heart is glad for all of the candidates, there's two that I have a closer affinity to two and a half. <laughs> Number one is always going to be Erica Coakley. I love you. Number two is Kristen French. I also love you. And then there's Dr. Helen Frazier, who will grab me by my ear if I don't say the right thing. <laughs> for sure. But for all, for Courtney and for Lauren, and I love all of you all. I love all of you. Congratulations on your wins. And let's go ahead on and make that change. Okay. Let's go ahead on and be the change that we want to see. Um, in outlying areas, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Senator Ronnie Sapp, uh from up in the Williamsburg area, uh, District 32, uh, State Representative uh, Wendy Brawley, uh, and also to Justin Bamberg, State Representative Justin Bamberg, all who took home wins and all who are going to continue to fight the good fight in the State House up in Columbia. But for all of those that I just named... Everyone that I just named, I don't know if you all heard the broadcast last night, my live last night. I talked last night about um, how we as a community that we're kind of flipping the script a little bit, whereas people used, were, have been accustomed to getting elected and they go off to do what elected people do without the community actually being a, um, a part of what they do. I said it earlier, they get it in their, in their minds that they know everything and then they never receive the input from the community or actually effectively represent the community. Well, we're going to flip the script on that. We're going to turn that thing around. We're going to start this thing right here in Charleston County and catch it on statewide. And we're going to make sure that our representatives are not only listening to the voice of the people. And I don't care what level, whether it's Congress, South Carolina General Assembly, the Sheriff's Office the Consolidated School Board, it makes no difference where. Schoolhouse, outhouse, White House, doesn't make a difference. The voice of the people is going to be heard and respected from here on out. It's time for a change, folks. That's why when people complain about the conditions that are around here and say, well, this party doesn't do that and that party doesn't do that, that's not an excuse that we're going to allow the community to have anymore because we're going to put it back on the community. What are you doing to make sure that your voice is heard in these spaces. We're going to make sure that those who can be involved in the school system, PTAs or whatever, have a way to be involved. Be it, be it face, I mean, we got these electronic devices. Folks can be involved through that. We need our teachers to understand how to, 
to, to connect with people on a different level. But we're going to push the envelope. Because for too many years, our politicians, our elected people have not been demanded to serve the people. So they've gotten into office and they've sort of done what they wanted to do. Our mayors, our council people, and they kind of do what they want to do. And there's too much room when that happens for people to start setting stuff up in the background. That's what happened in the city of Charleston. For 40 years, folks patted Joe Riley on the back. Great job, Joe, great job. While Joe was setting up, first off, an empire for himself that he's continuing to set up and also gentrified black people out of the peninsula of Charleston. While folks was like, yeah, because nobody held him accountable. There was a point when Quadro Campbell was pushing the needle, but something with Quadro, what happened with Quadro and he like disappeared. Ain't going to be no disappearing now. Real systemic change is about to happen. It's going to happen at the demand of the people. The, the people will speak. And if the people are not heard, uh, guess what's going to happen? See, politicians work for us. Our tax dollars pay them. Our tax dollars pay them. So they work for us. And when you hold a job... As an employee, and you don't do what you're supposed to do on the job, what the employer says, what does the employer do? They terminate you, right? They fire you. So we are going to definitely adopt that method of dealing with these politicians because we need them to be public servants and quit with the politicking or politricking. We need them to serve the public. The public is us. Why? Because we're the public and we pay them to serve us. No more Facebook ninjas and keyboard warriors. You can do all that you want, but we're going to be, be asking our people out here to get up and get involved. You, hashtag revolutionaries. Mm -hmm. Like button warriors. Feel like you've done, you've completed your obligation to service because you didn't hit the like button. Nope. From now on, the community is going to be accountable to making sure that our elected officials are accountable to the community. See how that works? <laughs> it's, it's a simple concept. The community will be responsible for making sure that the representatives, our elected officials, are responsible to the community. That's the way it works. And it will definitely work. And we're going to put that in place. And the vehicle that we're going to use to put it in place is the Democratic Black Caucus of Charleston County. 46 counties in South Carolina, and we're going to be having a black, a Democratic Black Caucus in each one of them. And uh, it's not open to just black people. There's white people or Latino uh, people of our population, uh, our, our Native Americans that want to be involved, our Asian brothers and sisters, LGBTQ. Everybody's welcome. Why? Because we're all in this mess together. We don't discriminate. Malcolm said he would work with anybody that was ready to fix this deplorable conditions we have around us. And we're going to work like that with anybody that's ready to fix this deplorable condition around us. But we're going to do it with respect for one another and respect for those politicians that we need to work on our behalf. Okay? All right, all right, all right. So that takes care of those who were victorious that I'm going to talk about. Like, there were more. There were more. And tonight is not about Vice President Joe Biden and Kamala Harris winning the presidency and the vice presidency. Okay. Uh, I'm not even going to worry about that other side. Sure. Uh, but let's move on now to that other level. And I don't know, I, I smiled a little bit bigger when I got to this other level because this other level is about winners. Winners. Winners who just were not victorious last night. How many of you know that, that, that you don't have to bring home the popular vote in order to be victorious? I know everybody that runs for office would love to, to, for that to happen. But... That seat does not make you a winner. It's what's in your heart that makes you a winner. 
When I ran against Tim Scott in 2016, I knew I wasn't getting ready to win that election. You know, in the back of my mind, in the front of my mind, I said, I want to win. Okay, I love to win. But I decided early on that when, place, or show, it was about presenting the issues to get taking that loud platform, running for the U.S. Senate, that platform all over the state, talking about the issues, talking about how we can increase people's pay, a minimum wage from $7.25 an hour up to 15 and it won't hurt the economy. As a matter of fact, it will strengthen the economy. Talking about affordable health care for all, talking about how uh, accessible housing is a mandatory for everyone, talking about public education versus privatization and the criminal justice system, that school or prison pipeline, and how privatization is feeding into that. I got to talk about all of those issues around the state in that campaign. And I decided early on, regardless of what the outcome was, spreading that message was much more important than me winning. And I put that message out there, and that message resonated. That was the same message that Senator Senator Sanders had. And there are those who would think that I got the message from Senator Sanders. And I sure can't claim that he got it from me. But I had been preaching that message <laughs> long before we saw Senator Sanders on that stage running for president uh, in 2016. And he had too. You see, because that's what logical, right-minded think people think about. How we can better our community how we can increase people's uh, level of, 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 of better people's lives by giving them better wages and making sure that their kids are being educated and stopping the school to prison pipeline and, and making sure that our communities are safe from gun violence and making sure that our environment is being taken care of and our, our planet is preserved for those behind us. That's how right people think. I, not right when it comes to political right because the political right folks, right wingers, don't think that way. Something is really wrong with them. I, I'm gonna, I, if something is really wrong with them, you know, but that's a whole nother, another thing. But the winners, here are the winners from last night, okay? And I'm going to start at the top and come back down, all right? These are the folks that, that put their head in the ring, and I'm so proud of every last one of them. And they fought the good fight, and in the end, that fight didn't give them the seat but that spirit, the American spirit, that drive to run for office in order to make life better for somebody, that's a win in itself. And I want to start with my friend Jamie Harrison, who ran for United States Senate against Lindsey Graham. A strong Republican in a red state, as they say, who gave it his all who, no matter who says what, and I got friends who want to talk mess and all of this here, and, and I love them too, but the reality is that man put himself out there. Him, his family, open up the door to attack ads. You don't know, if you haven't been there, how heavily, when people attack your character, how heavily that weighs on the mind. And you got too much good in your heart to just tell them, just meet me out back. We'll handle this. You, you, you really can't go to that level. And it's hard. And there's so many attack ads today. The, the Republican Party, I guess they, they think that that's, that's how you campaign. is by tearing down somebody's character. They lie, cheat, steal, and they buy elections. I don't get it. I don't get it. But for the person that's receiving that, that person that's running for office just to better our community, to be attacked in the manner that people get attacked, it's ridiculous. And it's weighing, weighs heavy on the spirit of a person. A person that has to, no matter what happens, no matter how many attack ads are, 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 are levied at them, no matter how a heckler yells at them, they still got to maintain their composure, present the issues, and then get up the next day to face the same thing. Shout out to Jamie Harrison. Man, congratulations, brother, for sure. You did the darn thing. 
And do not be, in be discouraged. Okay? I made a comment earlier today that um, movements are made up, they're an accumulation of moments. For every one of these people I'm going to talk about today, this was a moment. Let the, that, that moment lead to the next moment and, and the next moment that's going to, that accumulation is going to amount to a movement. This is all part of your destiny. Let it play out because in the end, if you keep your heart right, everyone I'm talking about tonight, if you keep your heart right, the real change that we seek that's going to make our nation better for our children and for their children and their children behind them, it's going to happen. Trust me, it's going to happen. As Dr. King said, I might not get there with you. But right now, from my mouth to God's ear, it's going to happen. Just keep your heart right. Got to keep your heart right. Jamie Harrison, I love you, brother. And right behind that U.S. Senate race, I talked about Congressman Clyburn and his win in the 6th Congressional District, and there's seven more congressional districts. Just as in 2016, the other six candidates in South Carolina did not come out victorious. One being right here that is problematic right now. I think there's a challenge going on, and that's Joe Cunningham. I think he's challenging that vote, which is the right thing to do, especially with the confusion over COVID and ballots and all of this right now. Just don't concede right now. He hasn't conceded as far as I know. And make sure that they do the full count on this thing, okay? If it needs to be a recount, that they'll do it. That's, uh, that's all part of the process. You don't necessarily have to sit down and take what they say. Make them prove it. That's for sure, okay? So Joe Cunningham, right now, as it stands right now, though, the, the, the word was that he had not won that, that seat, reclaimed that seat as the incumbent. And then we had across the other five congressional seats in the second, third, fourth, fifth, and seventh, Congressional District in South Carolina. Five Democrats ran, just as they, they, we did in 2016, and none of those was victorious in that. But they're still all winners. Adair, Adair Burroughs in the 2nd Congressional District who ran against Joe Wilson, y'all know him. He was the one that, when President Obama was giving that speech, he yelled out of there, disrespecting the president right in the middle of chambers. You lie! Trash. Got no business being a, a, a representative in, in, in Congress. No decorum. In the 3rd Congressional District, we had Hosea Cleveland. Uh, Hosea actually ran in 2016. This was his second try to uh, unseat Jeff Duncan, the Republican Jeff Duncan. I don't even want to say anything about Jeff Duncan. Something, something is wrong with him. Something is truly wrong with him. In the 4th Congressional District, we have uh, Kim Nelson. Uh, Kim Nelson, uh, I think this was her first time out. In the 5th Congressional District, we have Mo Brown. Mo Brown is a former, I believe it is, um, uh, Carolina uh, running back, or I know he's, a, I think he was a football player with Carolina, and he ran um, in the 5th Congressional District. And also my good friend Melissa Watson ran in the 7th Congressional District against Tom Rice. Of those other six seats in South Carolina, congressional seats, none of the Democrats emerged victorious. But whether they emerged victorious or not, putting their hat in the ring to run against these people, it took guts, it took perseverance and persistence, it took patience. It took a whole lot for them to do that. And so no matter who says what, at the end of the day, although the numbers might not say victorious or read victory, in the real, every last one of them, they're all winners. Because they got out there and did that. You just don't, if you haven't run a, a race, a, a, a political race, you really not wouldn't understand it. And if you've run a, a city race 
or a district race or a county race, you would not understand what it is to run a congressional race. They divide this state up into seven sections, <laughs> seven sections. Now, when you run for that section, you got to cover that whole section. There are five million people in South Carolina. Divide that by seven, and each one of those sections got about that many people. Or it's 32,000 square miles in South Carolina. Divide that by seven people, and each one has that much space to cover. It ain't easy. So to Joe Cunningham, Adair Burroughs, Hosea Cleveland, my brother, Kim Nelson, Mo Brown, and Melissa Watson, I salute you. I salute you. Congratulations for a job well done. And don't quit. It's not the end. It's not the end. There's better yet to do. Learn from what you did this time and keep pressing forward. And don't let anybody say that that you 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 you're not you're not the best because you are the best every last one of you so let's move from congress and the u.s house of representatives down to our south carolina state house and i'm only going to cover three uh of those who ran uh locally who ran hard they put up the good fight they were definitely the better candidates in my eyesight. But unfortunately, when the final count came out, they just didn't pass on to victory. And that's Sam Scarden, Debbie Bryant Chapman, and Richard Resick. Sam Scarden in the, 40, uh, in the South Carolina Senate District 41, Debbie Chapman Bryant in South Carolina Senate District 44, and Richard Resick in South Carolina Senate District 43. Outstanding Democratic candidates that would have definitely changed the course of, of, of our Senate relationships here in South Carolina had they won. But even though they weren't victorious, here I go again, they're still winners. They're winners because they've influenced people's lives. I've heard, I haven't really heard Debbie. I've seen her commercials, but I've actually heard and interacted with Sam and Richard. And they are truly just amazing people. Their presence in our South Carolina Senate would have been revolutionary. A lot of the things they would have pushed forward would be the things that dug us out of the pits of everything that we should be doing good in and moved us into a place where the people, representatives of the people, representation of the people would have been in our South Carolina State House. So shout out to Sam's Garden, Debbie Chapman, uh, Brian Chapman, and Richard Reese. Thank you all for your service. Thank you. You all are truly winners, every last one of you. And then our South Carolina House of Representatives, we have just a, a, another set of folks. And I'm not going to dwell on it too much. I'm going to roll through this, starting with my good friend, Jen Gibson. Jen, Gibbs, Jen Gibson ran for House seat number nine, District 99. And uh, we missed a, a golden opportunity to have an outstanding person representing us in District 99. That's over Daniel Island in that area over there. It, 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 it makes no sense. Outstanding individual, Jen is, for sure. Patricia Cannon. Tricia, what they called her. Man, District number 94. We should have been behind her. She should have had the seat. Because I do believe that everybody's on here was behind the Democratic candidates. Unfortunately, it just didn't bring in the win, the victory. Ed Sutton, Air Force pilot, District 114. Catherine Whitaker, District 37. Daniel Brownstein, District 112. Amazing people. People who stepped outside of their comfort zone and said, I will put my hat in the ring to serve my community. They not only did it, they put themselves on the line. 
They put themselves up against some people that ain't always pleasant. And they put themselves up because they want to serve the people. So, winners. Winners, folks. Y'all in no way lost last night. In my heart and in my eyesight, you all are the better people anyway. Because I know where your heart is. So, oh, there was one more, okay. He's not a Democrat, but I talked with him and we had a great conversation. His name is Brad Jane. Congratulations, winner, because you got in that race. You got in that race, Brad, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate the conversation that we had. Sure. So beyond the South Carolina House of Representative races, let's move a little further down. And I want to start with a race that is truly the outcome. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. But I know that regardless of the outcome, the person that is not now the solicitor elect for the Ninth Circuit, a man of Im impeccable quality, ethical, moral, knowledgeable, and was setting up a system in order to break away from locking folks up and getting folks into restorative justice, rehabilitation, helping people to stand as opposed to locking folks up so that they not only go to jail, but they come back out and come back to jail. And that's Ben Pogue I'm talking about. Shout out to Ben. Job well done. A race ran with integrity. And for all of my Democratic people that I've named, races run with integrity. Where I saw the the worst elements come out of the Republicans that, that, that could, there were, there were a few that I, I must say did good and didn't stoop that low. But overall, it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. And for anybody, let me just put this out, for anybody who's running for office and there's somebody, a pack that presents a commercial or has you in it supporting you and it's a nasty ad and you don't tell them to stop that, get your name out of there, you're just as bad as them. I'm just going to put that out there. You get no, no respect, no props from me on that. I love you, but I ain't got to give you no respect on that. If you want some respect, tell them people that got your picture in there with them nasty darn eyes, the ads to get, 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 out, get, out, get your face out of there. Correct that, for sure. Ben Pogue, an amazing, amazing individual. So Ben, <laughs> man, there's no way that, that, that you're not having a victory last night makes you anything less than a winner. You, Herbert Fielding, who ran for Charleston County Coroner, Dan Gregory, who's been online, I believe, with us for this tonight, who ran for Charleston County Clerk of Courts, you all are, are, are uh, y'all didn't lose. Every one of you, you put your, your hat in the ring, you got in the race, and you got in your race to represent our people, our community. You, 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 something inside says that there needs to be a better way for people, and, and, and let me help to make it a better way. And because of that, you unselfishly stepped back from yourself and got into the ring. And I appreciate that. And I salute each and every one of you. Ben, Herbert, Dan, I salute you. And for all of those folks that spend time talking about Dan Gregory being a Republican when he was, it was 2016, if you didn't talk to him and you made them claims, you should have been just shutting up. That's for sure. Because y'all know I don't rock with no Republicans. And I've been around long enough not to be duped by a fake Republican. Dan Gregory is a good man that stands for democratic principles. And we missed a golden opportunity because people was undercutting him and backbiting him and making up lies about him and playing into a Republican narrative. I'm going to drop that right there. Okay. Dan. You, Ben, Herbert, you all are winners, for sure, in my book, if nobody else tells you. 
Now let me drop on down as it, we are hitting on 930 to the Charleston County Consolidated School Board race and those who were not victorious last night. I talked about the victorious ones. There were 16 people in that race, 16 people and only five seats. So somebody had to miss out on the victory lap. But I'm here tonight to say for each and every one of those who ran, you still get to take a victory lap in my book and in my heart. Kevin Holland said, incumbent candidate, my brother, we still got work to do. Just because it's not at the school board right now doesn't mean that the work stops. I know your heart for the community. Once again, the community missed out on a golden opportunity to put somebody in that seat that really, really will make a difference when it comes to quality public education. Somebody that has proven it and who I know would work for our children for quality public education. But in the words of that other guy, it is what it is. So now we just go to work. But no matter which way it goes, congratulations, brother. You ran a good race. You ran a clean race. Even though they put attack ads out there at you, you didn't stoop to their level. You always rose to the top. Chris Collins, you too. You didn't drop down either. Great race. Bravo. Great race. Francis Baylot. Whew. Once again, we missed a golden opportunity to get somebody in that seat who would have been revolutionary as far as changing it. Don't let this be your last run, Francis, okay? Make sure that you continue to work toward that. The, our community needs you. And there's no way that I could say that because you weren't victorious last night, that today that you, you lost? No, no, the community lost. With each and every one of these, the community lost. Reverend Charles Glover, another brother, same thing, heart for the community. No losers. These are winners I'm talking about. Reverend John Prelo, downtown. Regina Duggins, mm, who's doing amazing things for our community. These folks I know got a heart for our community. They ain't trying to do this thing for power and money and all of that. These people have a heart for the community. Lee Bennett. Tony Lewis been fighting for our community and our kids since, shoot, since freedom schools. <laughs> Tony might be that old. I don't know. <laughs> Just people, good people. So no matter what anybody says, you might not have brought home that V yesterday. You might not have brought home that W according to votes, but in my book and in my heart, you, every last one of you all are winners, and you'll always be winners. And if you ever need me for whatever, I'm right there for you. And contrary to the problems that we experience myself, Lewis Smith, who ran for Dorchester District 2, again, Lewis, you, you're a winner no matter what. Because it takes guts to do what you did, to get out there and to run that race. And you did it with dignity. On certain constituent boards out here, a couple of people that I just wanted to acknowledge would be uh, George Temple, who ran for constituent board, Charleston County Constituent Board, as well as Elvin Spates, another candidate, another um, person who ran for the constituent board, Rodia Baxter, Another good friend of mine, an apostle, Gertie Ford. These folks didn't make it. But let me just tell you, just because you didn't get the victory last night, that does not mean that you're not a winner. You are a winner. Because once again, getting, just making that step to run for office, that's a win in itself. And I appreciate you so very much. Outside of the Charleston County area, as I get a little closer to Closing in Berkeley County, I just want to give a shout out to, uh, to Pastor Elaine Barnett, my sister, job well done, and of course, I'm, again, you are, you are definitely a winner, no matter what happened yesterday. And another person that 
I never showed any support for, but I admire the spirit in his household because I've stood on a, on a protest line with his wife, and that's Michael Bagley. Michael Bagley for District 9, Berkeley County. I just want to give you a shout out. Folks, none of you all, none of you all is any way less than a winner. And I just want you to know that. And moving on over to Collardon County, there are three people, there are more than three in Collardon County, but three in particular that I really want to make sure that I shout out as I come to a close, okay? First off, African-American woman who ran for the sheriff of Collardon County, ran against a good old boy in a good old boy county, one of the strongest good old boy counties in South Carolina, Collardon County. And I'm talking about Alicia Bodison. Ms. Bodison, job well done. Well done. Didn't bring the V in, but that's all right. That does not make you are a winner. You are a winner. You put a you 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 boxed you you boxed Buddy Buddy Hill in his mouth. <laughs> and I'm so proud of you. I'm proud. I was proud to stand with you when the 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 press and standard came against you with a uh, with a negative ad that had nothing to do with you and they put your name on it you stood and you stood firm and you stood proud and if you ever need me for whatever, whatever just give me a call i'm less than an hour away why because you are a winner as well as two school board candidates Collardon County School Board my girls <laughs> Taisha Aiken and J.D. Davis. Man, I am so proud of you all. You all stepped up to a space that you had been occupying already and just decided, okay, let's take this to another level. We've been pushing the envelope inside of these school board meetings. They don't like to see us coming anyway because we're talking about the real when it comes to our kids and our community. So instead of just being just people signing up to speak for five minutes or three minutes at the board meeting, you both decided, I'm going to be this board. And you decided to run, which is not, again, that's not an easy thing. And I am so proud of you, so happy for you, and just so much love and respect for what you did in college. One of the hardest places in the world for an African-American to run, and then for it to be an African-American female, right on. And no matter who says what, you all are winners, 100%. Y'all are bigger winners than some of those that took home the V last night. Why? Because they came with privilege and they left with privilege. But you all fought the good fight from the heart. Grassroots, boots on the ground. And the people will know and respect that. So don't quit. Don't give up. And this goes for everybody that I've talked about. Don't give up. Don't quit. There's a next step. You got to keep on going. For each and every one that I've talked about tonight, you are bridge builders, okay? You are bridge builders for the community between whatever entity you're running for and the community. You are that bridge that we need because right now there's a divide. You all are the spine of our community. You are the ones who are holding our community up right now, even though you're not sitting in the seats. So you got to keep holding it up. I know you get tired. I know you get weary. I know you get frustrated, but you got to keep pressing because there's too much at stake. You are the voice of our community. Every last one of you. And not getting the V yesterday doesn't stop that today. And that's why you're winners. You were winners before you decided to run because you were doing these things. You were winners during the time that you ran. And even though you didn't get the V yesterday, you're still winners. You are the voice of our community. So don't stop, folks. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't go backward. Don't compromise and don't give in. Don't don't shuffle your feet along. Don't go along to get along. Don't buck dance out here. None of that. Stand your ground. Don't let anybody get in your way or prevent you from being the conduit for peace, justice, unity, truth, equity, 
prosperity, and most of all, love in our community. You all are the ones. Everyone else will be blessed because of you. And that's why, in my humble opinion, each and every one of you, <laughs> you're a winner. You are a winner. So, in closing, Curtis Mayfield, Curtis said these words, he said, Hush not, child, and don't you cry. Your folks might understand you by and by. Just move on up towards your destination. Though you might find from time to time complications. Bite your lip and take a trip. Though there may be a wet road ahead and you cannot slip. Just move on up for peace you'll find into the steeple of beautiful people where there's only one kind. Move on up, folks. Move on up. Don't let the outcome of yesterday be a hindrance to the progress that you will make in your life and in the lives of others today and tomorrow. The future is ahead. ahead. Your destiny is ahead. Is ahead. The seeds of a prosperous future have already been planted in your hearts. You just have to continue to nurture it. Don't be frustrated. Don't let anybody hold you back. Don't let anybody tell you that yesterday was not a victory. It was. You might not have the title, but you still won. From my heart to your heart and from my mouth to God's ear, you all are winners. Keep striving, keep fighting, and don't let nobody turn you around. This is Pastor Dixon. I thank you all for staying on with me tonight. I really appreciate each and every one of you all. All of you who ran for office, all of you who won, all of you who were winners but didn't bring home the victory, all of you who are in our community like Rose Maddie that's on here, Rose Marie that's on here right now, in our community right now, fighting every day for truth and justice. Stand as one, United Front, Wayland Heart Team, Gen Z, all of the organizations that's out here fighting. I love you all. I love you all. And no matter where I am and no matter what I do, know that I love you all from the bottom of my heart. And for all of those other folks out there, I know that I might even have a racist or two on here tonight. Guess what? <laughs> y'all in trouble because I love y'all too. <laughs> all of y'all folks that like to talk crazy about Pastor Dixon, they call me a terrorist. They say I'm a racist. They tell me this, that, and the other. And all I can say back to them, man, I love y'all. <laughs> and they ain't not, there's absolutely nothing that any one of them can do about it. Because loving somebody else is, 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 is on you. It's not contingent on them. It's on you. And there's absolutely nothing they can do about it. So in closing, please, tonight, tell somebody you love them. Go to your little ones if they're in the bed. If not, give them a hug. Give them a kiss. Tell them you love, love them. If they're asleep, whisper in the ear, I love you. And then give them another one in the morning, I love you. Again, spouse, husband, wife, baby daddy, baby mama, boyfriend, girlfriend, just a friend. Tell, them, tell somebody you love them. Text them and just say you love them, okay? You'll sleep better tonight. Trust me. <laughs> I love each and every one of y'all, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. Y'all take care. Have a wonderful night. I'll be back on probably another day or two or after we get some definite results. On my, I think my TV's back on now. Some definite results about the presidential election that I know that Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris are going to be our next president and vice president of the United States. Y'all take care. God bless. I love you. Peace.